All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We're here on the north side of the property looking at some of my in-ground fig trees. And I wanted to report back to you guys on some of the varieties that have survived the winter that actually are proving to be quite hardy varieties. Uh, because this is an area here that is quite neglected that I've sectioned off for testing the hardiness of these particular varieties. Now, we've actually, this year, we'll get into it a bit later in the video, but we have really not protected any of the fig trees here on the property. So although this is the neglected area, this is the section of the yard that's meant for this, testing the hardiness of these varieties. Um, the entire yard really was a big test this year. So I wanted to report back to you guys and show you some of the results. Here out in the front, I'm seeing really great results. And the reason for that is because the trees here are also, number one, relatively hardy varieties that I've specifically chosen for this trial. But also number two is that the soil here is quite dry during the summer. Although it is moist and very wet right now, there was a big shade tree, as you see right here, um, that used to be right here in this particular spot. And it got hit by lightning a few times. We had to chop it down. And I think because that process of removing the stump kind of left a lot of air pockets or just in general, wasn't great for the soil moisture in this particular location. And so whatever has grown here has grown rather slowly because there just really isn't a lot of water in the soil here. I mean, it could be really pouring, raining, and it seems like the water just drains super well here. Um, so there's a number of reasons, and I, I don't know, we can get into more about that, but the point is, is that these trees don't receive that water, and because they don't receive that water, they don't grow very quickly. And they also tend to stop growing at some point in the summer, which is normally what you would see in parts of Europe or other places that typically have a drier soil, you then end up seeing hardier trees. The, the fig in particular, if it grows too much in the fall or in the summer, excuse me, doesn't harden up in time before the winter, you then end up having a problem where the trees just do not survive or take a significant amount of damage uh, that particular following winter. So the trees here do wonderful in terms of the hardiness. Uh, this is a variety here that's rather new to this whole trial. It's called Campaneri. And this one has basically, as far as I can tell, taken very little damage. Uh, so this is definitely, in my mind, solidifying this particular variety as a, as a hardier variety. Uh, there's also right here, this is Teramo, which has taken some uh, minor amounts of damage. This is the same thing that I've, I've learned and grown as a fig called Nebo, you may have heard of. But this is a fig that was found in Maryland in, in a zone seven that Big Bill has found and does really well in colder places. So that one is hardy here to this, this winter. This one also down here is called Michurinska 10 or uh, Floria. So that one has done super well, has taken almost no damage. Uh, this tree here, I don't really, not really gonna put much stock into this, but this is Salato and it's proving to also be rather hardy. Here's another Campaneri that's younger and less established. And this wood up here has definitely taken some damage. You can tell by the coloration and when I break this off, it just comes right off. But this wood down here looks really good. Uh, we'll look at a few other Campaneries because I have them planted throughout the property all over the place. And then this down here is a hardy Chicago type that also Big Bill had recommended to me. It's not necessarily the tastiest hardy Chicago, but one that produces well and is hardy. This one's called, I think, Sicilian Dark, if I'm not mistaken. But in this exact spot, I've had other trees survive the winter. So it's not like, you know, that is the only set of trees I've ever had in that location. Um, I've also had Malta Black and other hardy Chicago types survive in that specific location without really much damage at all. Uh, this winter, we got down to about six degrees Fahrenheit for a short time. 
uh, that's actually really um, pretty mild <laughs> compared to what we can see, which is about zero degrees Fahrenheit. This planting here is on the west side of the property. And I'm finding, oddly enough, the trees over here are doing very well. And I think it has a lot to do with the sun is coming in here and radiating against this house. And you know, that thermal heating that you, you see from buildings, from big rocks, big boulders, all that thermal heating, I think, especially because it's on the west side, the sun sets on the west side. So late in the day, this I think is gaining a lot of heat and warming up a lot of the trees along the house. What we have here is a variety called, uh, this is Azores Dark, actually right down here, which looks like it took absolutely zero damage. This is a younger Azores Dark that I planted. Right next to it is Conde, which are both, again, hardy Chicago types. So someone's wondering, you know, what are the varieties I can plant in a colder place? They're gonna survive. I mean, hardy Chicago is the number one. Uh, so that's a different type here. We also have white Triana right here, which looks pretty good as well. I do think the closer they are to the house, obviously, the warmer they're gonna be because of that thermal dynamic heating. And uh, so that's made a big difference. This one here is called, um, let's find the tag, Kafeji Black. So this one is actually of a, from a Bulgarian grower, uh, actually a Hungarian grower, excuse me. And uh, this is, I think, a Hungarian hardy fig, which is pretty good so far. It looks really solid uh, in terms of the hardiness. This one has taken almost zero damage like the hardy Chicago. That's pretty uh, promising. Down here is the Ruchiello de Elba. Same thing, almost zero damage. And again, I didn't protect any of these trees. My anticipation or my plan was to bend a lot of these branches over, stake them to the ground and then cover them with mulch and then cover them with tarps. That never happened this year. This one here is uh, another Azores Dark. Again, very minimal damage. Even on this new growth up here after I had pinched it, this stuff has done really well. Um, in fact, there's very minimal damage. So this is a great sign for this particular fig. Uh, this one over here is LDA, Long to Dupe. So Long to Dupe, again, very minimal damage from the winter, a great sign. And then this one over here is uh, Green Michurinska. This is a hardy Bulgarian fig from Penn and Pike that I've talked a lot about this particular fig. And even this very thin growth up here that did not lignify very well. It's kind of the same thing, oddly enough, with this hardy Chicago, Azores Dark, and even this LDA. Typically what I saw this year is that the, the growth that was higher up on the tree after we did the pinching, right? Because pinching not only induces the fruits in the summer, but it also encourages more branching. So when we saw those, that branching form, it did not have enough time to lignify in time. And that is a, just a surefire sign that your tree is gonna take some damage in the winter as we discussed earlier in the video. So it's interesting now to see on a couple of these trees like the green Michurinska, even this LDA, the Azores Dark, is that a lot of this, even the upper growth that it didn't lignify as well is still surviving somewhat. And I should get, get some uh, branching that leaves out here at the top, which is really what I wanted, is a lot of these trees to be alive and actually form a canopy much larger, uh, much higher up here. Um, we also have, by the way, which, which has done really well, is Noreno. This is Moro de Caneva. And, uh, well, actually, excuse me. This is not Noreno right here. This is... One is this? I think this is Safrari. Okay, this is LSU Tiger. So LSU Tiger looks really good. I forgot about LSU Tiger. And that a lot of us actually in the fig communities, when we're looking for these hardy varieties, there's been some good reports about LSU Tiger and that it's rather hardy. LSU Tiger to me is just a hybridized version. It is a hybridized version. Um, hybridize is that really the word it's a bred version of celeste and celeste has got some good genes in it for hardiness 
And to me, LSU Tiger is really just a larger Celeste. That's really all it is. Uh, it's, you know, it even gets that bluer tones on the skin that you can, you can often see with most Celeste varieties is that it gets that bluer skin. It's like a Celeste that's almost double the size, grows extremely well, sets extremely well, and of course, it's hardy. Uh, this over here is Safrari. So this is one from Bass that I had picked up. It's very similar to White Triana and Atriano. Um, a lot of these hardier varieties that we think of in the Northeast, uh, I'm sure Unknown Mitica might be probably very similar to the hardiness here. There's a number of them. Uh, you know, I'm also trialing now uh, Qualat Al Madik. So there's a number of these very similar varieties that we know historically uh, without really meet, being here. Brooklyn White's another one. Brooklyn White's found in Brooklyn. So, you know, those are hardy figs and they're very similar to these two, White Triana, and of course they're surviving the winter. Bass had mentioned that even if this one doesn't survive the winter, which it has done really well, actually. Even if it doesn't survive the winter, it comes back and fruits in one season. Um, this over here is, uh, is Stallion. So Stallion is a, is a type of Celeste. In the past, I would have referred to this as a Blue Celeste, but uh, in my mind, there's no such thing as Blue Celeste except for the one singular variety, Blue Celeste. So this is just a type of Celeste that turns blue on the skin. And um, this one has done really well. There's almost no damage again up here on the top. What was surprising to me was that this Negretta had took some damage. Um, I would have thought Negretta, having that reputation, would have been a more hardier fig. Um, the next one over here, I don't know if you guys are getting the full picture of this. Let me actually zoom in. Like, look at the, the branching here. It's perfect. You know, even if I did the scratch test, it looks so healthy, this growth. Uh, it's amazing, I think. My fingernail is not exactly getting in there, but I promise you most of this upper growth here, I've went through every tree, chopped them back to what is probably healthy or living growth. Same thing here with this tree is that this is Moro de Caneva and it has done exceptionally well. This is Nerino, and again, there's very minimal damage, uh, even up here at the top, which is pretty significant. Going forward again, I think that's another LSU Tiger, if I'm not mistaken. Let me get in there for you guys and look. This is either, I think this is LSU Tiger, yeah. So this is LSU Tiger, again, taking minimal damage from the cold. I have a feeling LSU Purple probably is the same, a similar story in that a friend of mine actually lives only not even five miles away, although his microclimate in his yard is better for these figs than where I'm at, as, you know, oddly enough, even though he's only five miles away, there can be a quite a big difference, but... Uh, he has an LSU purple tree in the ground that's done really well for him and has survived. I've seen it. I've eaten fruit off of it. It's really significantly um, an impressive variety in the cold. Here's LSU Huye. Again, a lot of these figs were bred with Celeste. So it's like, why wouldn't the LSU figs or a lot of the LSU figs do well? And um, this one up here at the top, this upper branching has definitely taken some damage. But I would argue some of this stuff down here... Uh, basically here, when I broke this, you can tell by the color of the wood, by the way. Um, the appearance of the wood, just by looking at it enough here, I can tell kind of what's alive and what's not. Let's do the scratch test. Yeah, that's nice and green in there. So for me, LSU Huye has done really well. This one also is brand new. This was lignified perfectly, planted as a five gallon size pot in this spot and did not grow for all of the summer. So it's lignified super, super well. This is Sementino Rosso. And it's an Italian heirloom fig that has done spectacularly. Um, I would put this among the hardiest figs. And, and most of the varieties here that we've mentioned so far, they're among a higher, higher class. 
This is a Texas BA-1, and oddly enough, I cut out half of the tree because it's dead, but the other half of the tree is alive and looks very good. So there's no damage on this. Weird, um, because especially because the this is further away from the house, this other branching um, was closer to the house. This is JH Adriatic. And again, there's very minimal damage. I mean, we're talking like, you know, six inches of growth worth of damage. And that's it. Um, so JH Adriatic, we know that one is a, is a hardy variety. That one was not, um, you know, a big question mark for that. As again, a lot of these varieties like Hardy Chicago and JH Adriatic, Negretta is another example, and even, you know, Nero 600M, there are growers that have been testing a lot of these varieties over the years in very similar climates to my own. Um, so, you know, I was not really surprised with some of these, uh, but certainly LSU Tiger is a new one, Nerino, Campanieri, you know, confirming some of these others. LDA is one that's, you know, been a standard and something that's been recommended for a while. Uh, so Green Michurinskas, that's a new one, you know. Um, what else do we have here? Here is a, another Nerino. Actually, this is a, not Nerino. This is called Fico Seco, which is a different um, name for Moro de Caneva. So again, very similar, but this growth all up in here is solid. So very good to see. This Ronde Bordeaux, I did protect it somewhat. This also has somewhat of a reputation of being hardy, but some of the growth actually did survive here. So it wasn't total dieback, even on this upper stuff, which I think did not get protected. So I th it goes a long way to have these trees against the house. I'll tell you that. Here's a little Ruby. This one survived last year without any damage. This year, I think there's very minimal damage, but these tips are a bit, bit uh, misleading here. And I probably won't know the total extent of the damage for maybe until the tree actually wakes up. And, it, you know, that could be across the board with most of these varieties. But if there is any damage on this, it's, it is very minimal. You know, this looks like it's dead, yeah. But if you look down here, this looks totally viable and alive. Um, you kind of just have to take my word for it at this point, guys. I'm sorry. Um, over here, we had very limited success. This is actually an area that gets less water. The trees looked better going into later parts of the uh, later parts of the winter, and I thought, wow, this is a really good plot again because of that soil moisture. This Campanieri did take some minimal damage, as well as, by the way, there's two Campanieris planted over there in the plot we just looked at. So it's weird. You know, you, 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 just because you plant Campanieri or let's say even Hardy Chicago in one spot isn't going to guarantee that it survives. You know, planting it in a very different spot. I mean, there's other factors like maturity, you know, uh, if you pruned it or not. A lot of these trees, I tried not to prune them. If you're going to get them through the wintertime and hope that they get through the wintertime, don't prune them until really the, uh, the spring. You can cut them down here at the base if you have multiple trunks. You want to take out a trunk, but I wouldn't be doing any pruning, especially higher up on the trees. Um, so Campanieri, although you know, is doing spectacularly in that spot up in the front with less soil moisture, uh, it's doing much worse on the west side. And this is another plot here on the west side uh, that, again, I think we just need another year. It, it takes time for these trees to really show their true colors. Um, certainly that one's not mature, uh, but anyway, the point is, is that you definitely need to pay attention to the location and maybe playing around with the location of where you plant these things is making the, the biggest of difference. Just because you, know, you gave up on figs years ago, they didn't work out for you because they didn't survive the winter. If you plant it a different spot with the right variety, who's to say it won't succeed? This one also did well. This was about really one of the few in this plot that did well, which was uh, Constans. This is a type of Pastelier. And I have a number of Pastelier types. 
this is the one on you know out of all of them that did uh anything significant so far in terms of hardiness um what else is looking pretty decent over here pretty soon i'm going to set up the tunnel for both of the plots we just looked at set up the low tunnels this is another elbow but this one took some damage here's a gayette which also took some damage but uh, yeah this is not looking good either and gayette's supposed to be a very hardy variety actually this fig here is a type of pastelier that looks pretty good. So both of the pastelieres here, there's one from a, a grower named Ciro and there's one from a grower named, or from uh, the Pocarolles, I'm not even pronouncing it correctly, a conservatory in France. So essentially, uh, those two particular varieties, as pastelier is just known to be a, definitely a hardier fig, without a doubt. The one that I have from Rain Tree did not do well. And that one's here planted against the house, right where those tunnels are, we're gonna look at. And a number of these trees, I, I don't really know. They, these did way worse than any of the other plots. But there was some standouts in here and I wish I had kept track of this a bit better. But as far as I know, just to kind of wrap up this, this tour here or this, uh, this video is that the the pastelier that we mentioned from rain tree it grows too quickly it died actually mostly to the base so that is significant and then also we have the saint martin here there was the white triana that did pretty well and also we had uh calderona which i thought was very surprising calderona looked pretty good and uh there was maybe one or two others there maybe was the blanche du saison and the Daloso. So that's a pretty good list of hardy fig varieties. I mean, it's pretty hard to go wrong with some of those that we mentioned if you want something that's gonna survive, especially when planted in the right spot. And I think, uh, yeah, you guys will be happy given you find the right variety in the right spot. And that's, that's a little update for this winter. Um, if I do something like this again, of course, the, the front of the house will keep updating you guys on that. But if I do this again, where I don't protect all the trees, which I sure, I'm sure at some point in the future as we, things will change. Um, but yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll keep you guys updated on this. And of course, if you want to see a full list, I'm going to create a blog post, figboss.com. We'll see you guys there. And also hit that subscribe button. Catch you guys for the next one.